Hello and welcome to another Star Citizen podcast with me, the lovely host, Board Gamer, and the even lovelier host, Zinya. Say hello, Zin. Hello, Zin. We're going to be talking about a few topics today, but um, uh, we've got a main one. Uh, so we're going to be talking a little bit about poor Olasar going away in now for 3.20. Sad, oh, no. sad face. Uh, we had a really quick Xenothrest. Xeno thrust, Xeno threat test. I'll try and make German compound words apparently out of my whole sentences. Um, but no, um, that was a really little quick test, but made some people very, very angry. I suppose everything's going to make some people angry. And the sort of main topic um, this time is the year so far. And I want to talk a bit about 3.18, 3.19, PEZ, the good stuff, the bad stuff, um, sort of real quick. And then we've got um, Citizen Con tickets. Um, but we'll talk all about that in due course. So, put Olasar, Zin. Yeah. It's going in 3.20. Bye. See you later. It is a couple of years later than we expected it to go, though. Or at least I expected it to go because they talked about it being replaced ages and ages ago. And obviously they've got all these modular space stations. What are your feelings towards this? Is it good riddance? Is it, well, they needed to update it? Is it, oh, they should have left it in and just gone, you know, there's less facilities in this area or or it's a bit different with this space station? I think it needs to be updated obviously because yep. as as they said themselves um it was missing out on the content that the other stations had yeah it's it's a very tiny little station and it hasn't got elevators that kill you because it's got no elevators yeah. so let's add them i mean it does have a nostalgic quality especially to like older star citizen players yeah it was the it was the first station we had in game in alpha 3 uh 2.0 2.0 many moons ago not that numbering systems mean much to Clan Imperium, as we've found out over the years. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, it was weird. So I very much like Port Alassar because it is quick, easy to sort of get in, get out, um, no no fuss. But problem is, is it's really old stuff now. They, they haven't got hangers there. It's only, only pads. Mm-hmm. Um, and Clan Imperium have moved quite far away from from pads now they're going actually hangers hangers suit our game better because we can do a lot more and obscure a lot more um with a hanger um there's a very small amount of facilities there there's no like medical um, bay there's no um full um sort of trade um section there's um a, only a limited amount of shops there's there's a huge amount of stuff uh, there's there's sort of like no um cargo decks and when you're adding things like the Hull Sea and there's a cargo refactor you're literally just going people that want to do stuff around crusader especially with like your whole C in, in 3.20, you wouldn't be able to do it. You wouldn't be able to do the cargo gameplay. There's no nowhere to, for that ship to dock. Yeah, they, they had to replace it, and it's being replaced with Seraphim Station, which, if you've seen it, Sin, and I know you have because you've edited the videos at the very least, <laughs> um, it looks a bit like Port Olisar. Yes, they've they've made it with um, Port Olisar as a template. Reference. Yeah, reference, reference or, or template. Yeah, that, that's that's sort of fair. Um, it's it's got the, the same sort of feel. So, also giving me Babylon Five feels for some reason. Yeah, I, I'm I'm glad they're replacing it. It sort of needs to go. They did say that they would somehow um, keep it in game in some way in the future, maybe. So maybe you'll have like an arena command level. Maybe they'll make a bit of flair that shows it off like a little model, something like that. Maybe the station will literally turn up elsewhere. Yeah, exactly that. Maybe they'll go. We'll just use bits of Port Olasar for scrap metal. <laughs> Just yep. floating around. Zin and I very much would have liked them to have a proper send-off of Port Olasar, like it be blown up in law uh, and in game, potentially. Stuff like that, that would have been cool. Although if, if they are planning on having it positioned elsewhere, maybe somebody comes along and literally just tows it away. Wow. <laughs> The SRVs just tow it away. Yeah. It is very small compared to other stations. Um, like, like, hugely small, like about five times smaller. Uh, and Seraphim Station, yeah, it, it, it's still got the, the feels, um, but it's a bit of a shame to not have the quick and easy access the Port Alasar gave, um, although Star Citizen is about admin a lot of the time, it seems. <laughs> but yes, looking forward to that in 3.20. Something else that happened uh, might still be happening at probably not a time of recording, uh, a time of uh, release, though. There's a stealth Xenothreat test going on. They just sort of ran a 24-hour test. Some people were like, what? Xenothreat's running with no announcement. And basically, Cloud Imperium said, we just want to do a quick test. It's going to only be running for 24 hours. And we want to sometimes run tests like this without messaging to um, get data and to see who sort of joins in on it and stuff. Because eventually there's going to be dozens, if not hundreds, of these sort of dynamic events throughout the universe. 
all happening at random times without necessarily an announcement. But also it's just great for CIG to get data. It did, however, make some very angry people on, on the forums just basically going, you're ruining the game by running these dynamic events. They break everything. I can't play. What are you doing, CIG? That was sort of a summary and, con and compression of the comments I saw on Spectrum. Angry people on Spectrum is just tradition now. Otherwise known as people. <laughs> uh, what do you think of this, Sin? Like, do you think that it's appropriate for CIG to keep on running these tests that do degrade servers and do make experience poorer um, for, for everyone involved? Um, or do you think it's important for them to get the data? I think they need to run them. They need to get the tests done. I think people need to suck it up. Yep, that's fair. It is alpha. They, they are testing stuff and we want them to push forward w with things and be involved with that. I think some people would prefer them to actually always be running a parallel branch on the PTU, which is exactly the same as the live server, except they run additional testing on it. But the, the counter argument there is I don't think enough people would use that because they're not going to have their stuff copied across and persist between patches as often. Uh, I just wanted people to be aware of that clan pyramid, sometimes run these little tests. Now, talking about terrible servers and everything exploding, the year so far. So this is the sort of main thing I wanted to focus on this episode. Mm. And um, we've had around six-ish months of Star Citizen this, this year, because that's how time works. Yes, it is now the seventh month. It is now the seventh month, so we've had about six months. And we've had a terrible time with 3.18 and the start of 3.19. And that's that's been most of the year. So at least four and a half months, maybe even five months, uh, we've had a terrible time uh, with sort of Star Citizen servers. So 3.18 um, added a load of cool stuff. But one of the things it added was persistent entity streaming, which is a core technology needed for server meshing, needed for the core of the game, needed for a load of stuff and basically allows them to have all this locational and uh, additional uh, information about entities which then can persist in the universe and you can put something like a weapon or a pico plushie or something in a in the middle of a desert and it will persist there on that server not every server and you might not be able to get back on your same server because it's only part of the, the sort of tech that we need to have true persistence. They don't have shard affinity yet, which would allow you to get back into the same server. They don't have the ability for you to choose which server you go on yet um, beyond the region you go in. Um, but this is a, a core tech they wanted to get in game. Now, just from that sin, just from the it's not fully implemented, the, the sort of everything here, um, hmm. do you think they should have put it in in 3.18? Do you think it was like necessary? Or do you think, well, maybe they should have waited until they had shard affinity or things that meant we could have actually seen persistent entity streaming more in practice? Um, I think they need to start somewhere. Yep. And if they keep putting things off and waiting for other things, stuff might never get sorted, if you know what I mean. Yeah, they need to iterate and iron on these things as well. I think that's fair. Persistent entity streaming, though, just caused so many problems with all the servers. Like, in the persistent... It, when it was in the PTU, when it was in testing, it seemed to work pretty well. As soon as they put it to live, everything exploded and stayed exploded for about three and a half, four months, maybe even sort of five months-ish. Um, and they sort of dialed persistent entity streaming back and they tweaked it. And they've got it in a much better place now, uh, still causing... Um, s some issues, admittedly, but much smaller amount than it was. Yeah, it, it just 3.18. Oh, great stuff in it, except for you couldn't play the game. Just server degradation, 30Ks, loads around little bugs. Yeah, it was it was, it was was a pretty bad time for Star Citizen's Persistent Universe. We did get rivers, which were very pretty. Mm -hmm. We had the cargo refactor, which, well, the start of the cargo refactor anyway, um, which allows us to treat cargo in different ways and have commodities as actually cargo that you can take with the tractor beam tool uh, rather than just sort of more of a static block. Uh, there were loads of point of interest and area updates with the Siege of Orison, um, Orison platforms opening up as missions, uh, Security Post Korea getting a big update, Prisons getting a big update. Um, we had Salvage gameplay. Salvage gameplay is genuinely good. We had Racing in the Persistent Universe, the load of racetracks, We've got the Vulture, the Scorpio Santeris. So it had a reasonable amount of stuff. It's just, it was pretty broken. Then we had 3.19. And that fixed a lot of stuff, but still had problems with persistent entity streaming. And the sort of launch of that patch, much better than 3.18's launch, but still had issues. Lawful 2.0, that big cityscape. What did you think of that, Sin? What did you it think of that? It was very pretty. Yeah, it, it is very pretty. My frame rate, the first time I went there, went to very low. 
Mm -hmm. But they seem to have improved that significantly as well. I need to make you play through the tutorial at some point as well. Oh, so. God, I don't know if I want to. It's, it's, only, it's only like 20 minutes. It's just so you can have an idea of exactly what, what it is and what it does and why you would want to do it or why you wouldn't want to do it. Um, so this is at Area 18. It's strange that it's not at Lawville, right? Seeing that Lawville's been updated. Yeah. And Area 18 very much, or, and the whole of that planet really needs the same sort of update that Lawville had, kind of, because um, it's older city tech. Savage missions, so that actually expand that savage gameplay a lot more with savage missions. And you also had the sort of attach detach uh, ability with the tractor beam tool, and a refinement of what cargo you could find on ships. So you can blow up a ship. There's cargo on board. That's pretty cool. And I suppose we sort of didn't really talk about this, but that they've also during that time they allowed for you to um, blow up ships and survive on a blown up ship. Mm -hmm. And then you can sort of assault them or whatever. There's soft deaths. Now, soft death, one of the best features that's been so far, in my opinion, because that combined with some of the cargo refactor and the salvage stuff allows you to then go on board a ship and loot its cargo, bring it back. People can request service beacons to get rescued as well because they're not killed when their ship explodes unless their ship gets blown up again. And you can loot all their components, or well, not all their components, but a lot of their components and their weapons as well, ripping them off and then attaching them to your own ship. So a load of really cool stuff there. Um, we had the Fury and the Lynx in 3.19 as well. I just really enjoy treasure hunting. W what do you think of the whole sort of cargo looting experience? I mean, it's a bit hit and miss, really. Yeah. You might spend time trying to get cargo and looting ships and stuff, and actually there's not an awful lot on there. Yes, that's true. Some of the, the larger scale sort of salvage missions that you can buy, because you basically buy the location of salvage, there's quite a bit of cargo there, um, and you can find some much rarer cargo sometimes. If you don't mind PvP, you're probably best off like trying to find people who are hauling cargo, scan them down and know exactly what they've got, and then work out whether it's worth your time. Yeah, I mean, piracy has been legitimised over the last few batches because of the ability to soft death a ship, so you can blow it up, then you can go on board and you can loot it um, more readily. And I think that's pretty awesome because those people can then defend their ship. They can call in service beacons. They've got a load of additional gameplay, which they didn't really put as part of the patches uh, that have sort of turned up, making the game a lot more fleshed out uh, and sort of ready for bounty hunting and um, even more c of a cargo refactor and stuff like that. Hopefully, potentially coming in 3.20 or, or at least later this year. They turned off the Siege of Orison, the platform missions around Orison for 3.19. I'm mm. not sure if you're, you're aware of that. Yeah, um, I am. Yeah, that's one of the things, but the reason we haven't been doing that content, which is some of my favourite. Yeah. Um, just because they, they turned it off. A lot of people were complaining about too many dynamic events. So Cloud Imperium constantly ran uh, sort of things like uh, Xeno Threat and Jump Town and, uh, and all this sort of stuff, which was causing problems with desync, problems with invisible players, um, problems with loads of other little sort of um, outline bugs, um, servers just get overburned and, and explode and 30Ks and, and stuff like that. So when events are running, often they cause loads of issues for people and they were running events lots during um, periods where the game had looked like it was getting better, like the server's more stable, and then they were like, ha-ha, get wrecked, son, you're not allowed to have st stable servers. But as we said earlier, Cloud and Pyram sort of want to get data for this sort of stuff. It is important for them. It is alpha. They are trying to iterate on it. Uh, and... Um, I'd say one of the good and bad things is persistent entity streaming because it needed to be done and implemented, but it caused so many problems for the actual playability and accessibility of the game. And we're still we're still having problems with elevators and trams now. That's one of the things that persistent entity streaming seems to have caused, or at least the servers. But Cloud Imperium looked to be testing lots of pff, lots of things in Eva Cardi. I I almost revealed some Eva Cardi secrets there, and I realised <laughs> I shouldn't. But good stuff. Salvage and treasure hunting, as I said, I think that was genuinely great sort of addition. The legitimacy of piracy is a lot more interesting gameplay. Got Lawville 2.0, that city looks fantastic. And now 3.19.1, genuinely in a very good place. But when they've been running Jump Town, there is there are invisible players, there is desync, there's still desyncing game. There is still a few dozen annoying bugs that happen in Star Citizen. It is alpha. How do you feel about 3.19.1 and how far they've come to date? Do you think they've done good or do you think they've done, well, actually, most of the year was terrible in forms of sort of accessibility and playability for Star Citizen? Yeah, they started off pretty terrible, um, but they, they have redeemed themselves, They or rather redeemed the game. It's an, it is in a much better place now. And I think they there will be things where they have to essentially 
trip up and, and stumble and, and pick themselves back up again in order to get it right. Yeah, it's not as if they, they pretended anything. Like, they said that the, the persistent entity stream was going to cause problems, and they're very mm-hmm. honest about, we, we, we broke it. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I suppose that moves on to, well, actually, 3.19.1 is in a good place and a good platform for a load of other content coming with 3.20 and then in the end of Q3 patch. And then there is supposed to be a Q4 patch this year as well. Clan Pyramid have uh, alluded to a couple of times as well, whether that's 3.21 or, or 4.0. We'll, we'll find out by the end of the year, hopefully. And I think that Arena Commander and the updates they've got to that actually sound really appealing to me. I would love to be able to go, oh, Zin, what do we want to do content today? Uh, there's actually, uh, we're waiting on doing a couple of videos and there's not much news at the moment. Let's play some Arena Commander and do an experimental mode mm-hmm. or do some Arena Commander multi-crew in Vandal Swarm or Pirate Swarm um, or some Tank Royale. And uh, so just the amount of cool experimental modes, the sort of potential for them having uh, and testing lots of other stuff like master modes they talked about in the Jump Point magazine and Infinite Wave Vandal Swarm in a single ship together. That sounds pretty appealing to me. See how far you can get. Yeah, l- l- loads of cool stuff for Arena Commander. Uh, and I think that might actually bring the game into a much better state for free flies because players can go, oh, Star Citizen's position universe is a bit broken. I want to try what Star Citizen's ship combat and, and messing around and what sort of gameplay I can expect from it. Oh, this is kind of cool. Um, hopefully, anyway. Hopefully it's not broken. Also, the, the frame rate is generally so much better in Arena Commander because it's not a server running loads of people. Yeah, stability and performance significantly better uh, in that uh, in those scenarios. Um, and they've got sort of like some levels which are even better performance-wise. And so um, Jericho Station, for example, is just Jericho Station and then space. Uh, so it should be very high performing. Yeah, I, I'm I'm super excited about it because I think it might it might just allow for a much more mainstream experience for Star Citizen. Uh, and there's a load of new missions. Um, got the Hull C, got a load of um, potentially uh, updates to cargo. There's probably going to be a ton of other bits and bobs, like um, I'm thinking we're going to see the new points of interest. What do you think about those new points of interest they've showed within the last few months uh, around the verse? Are you excited to see them in game or do you think it's not really going to change your experience much because you won't visit them? Well, I think it'll be great if we have missions there. Yeah, reasons to go there. <laughs> yes. so, well, it's not just that, but so quite often, obviously Ghost Hollow and those sorts of ones have come in. Um, but it's just better to have a be given a mission. It's like you're going to this place, and it's not just an underground bunker, yeah, or something like that. You know, something just one of those little landing points. This could be any location in game because they all look the same. But yeah, when I've got nice and unique locations, and each of them are sort of like little named settlements. I think there's 15 or so they're going to be putting in um, for 3.20. Oh, wow. so that's the plan. Yeah, I know, and and a lot, lot of them look pretty cool. I mean, a couple of them are like little tiny. I mean, like fishing villages but some of them are like um big forts on hills yeah I, i'm super excited for that and we might see things like maybe we'll see tractor beams for ships ships get maybe it's a little bit less likely now um we might see vulcan integration which would give you traditional graphics options potentially for the game which m- might be nice but yeah three by 20 it's looking pretty cool there's gonna be a load of features revealed in the next um few weeks uh, as they're in their run-up to it and um i think we are genuinely in a very good place um, as a launch platform for 3.20 and a load of more content this year that should be pretty good. And they're going to keep on refining persistent entity streaming and making that better. They're going to keep on running these events. Hopefully they'll turn back on Siege of Horizon and, and the platforms. And I, I actually believe that for 3.20, they've got a load more platforms around Orison and, and new missions there as well. Loads of new missions. And uh, we'll be playing Star Citizen a lot in 3.19.1 as well because it is in a relatively good place. Uh, I suppose something I actually do want to mention real quick. Hmm. Foundation Festival starts real soon. Oh, yeah. Not exactly sure what date. Well, we should find out later today when it starts because they'll say it in the this week in Star Citizen newsletter. That's sort of about helping players and uh, I suspect there's going to be a free fly and new referral scheme and some bits like that. A load of people making tutorials and um, Zin and I might get involved with that if we've got time. Lastly, Citizen Con tickets. All the VIP tickets, they sold out instantly, Zin. Bam, gone. Yeah. People really annoyed because at one point you couldn't buy them if you were American. You couldn't buy any Star Citizen ticket. It said it wasn't a valid country, <laughs> um, which I don't agree with. I think it's a totally valid country. Um, yeah, so there, there was problems with that briefly and people were like, I, I've got a VIP ticket and oh, no, they've all gone now because you're saying I'm allowed to buy them. Hmm. But yeah, so they, they sold out the, the all the waves of the VIP tickets incredibly quickly. Um, some people got them. Uh, the general normal standard 
pauper peasant tickets. That's that's not true. They're incredibly expensive. One hundred ninety nine dollars for the standard tickets. Uh, they've got some of them left. I don't think it's many, but they are, there are still some less left. So get involved with that if you want to. Uh, I'm going to be watching CitizenCon from the comfort of my own home. I suspect Zin does want to go to America, but I was like, it's a two day event. <laughs> Especially if work's paying for it. Oh God. Oh no, that that gave me a, a, literally a cold sweat. <laughs> yeah, we, we, it's a two day event. We'll we'll watch and we'll cover it. Um, I suspect there's going to be Citizen Con in the UK next year, probably because of how big their studio and the focus on the UK is. Um, so we'll we'll definitely attend that one if if that's um if that's a thing. But uh, looking forward to Citizen Con this year. That's going to be on the twenty first and twenty second of October, a little bit later this year. But um, lo- really looking forward to that. And that's your podcast. For today, I'm interested to know if you got a Citizen Con ticket, um, if you had a problem buying your Citizen Con ticket, and what do you think of the year so far? Do you agree with us that 3.18 was very unplayable and the um, sort of first half, most of the first half of the year, terrible, but 3.19.1, very good? Or do you think it's still terrible? Do you think that, that, that everything's exploding? They shouldn't be running events? Um, I'm sort of interested in it to, know, to know your experiences playing. Or have you just been playing mostly in the PTU and the test sort of servers and going, this is fine. I'm sort of testing new stuff as as it comes out in Star Citizen. And that's what I sort of want to be doing with the alpha until it's ready. Um, are you sad about Port Star going away? Interested to know all that sort of stuff. Say goodbye, Zin. Goodbye, Zin. Thanks very much for watching, guys. You take care. And um, comments. Make Make them. Down, down below. There are so many space games. Star Citizen is obviously king. Fight me. But how do you keep yourself secure and private while in space, away from the prying eyes of big pirate and big space? NordVPN.com slash board gamer. That gives you potentially the best protection in cyberspace. Oh, see what I did there. Stay safer online with a secure private internet connection that also helps you get access to the content you want. Let me give you some testimonials that I'll just make up now. Um, I just turned off NordVPN and got ganked by a load of pirates. I turned off NordVPN and my legs fell off. There you have it. Get NordVPN because if you're not going to believe those testimonials that I just made up, what are you going to believe? You can grab it from the links below. It's good and it's super cheap and I use it. There you go. Boom. Something else that's good is our ship giveaway. Salvage is the newest big gameplay loop at the moment in game, and we want to help you get involved with that, so we're giving away a Drake Vulture light salvage ship with lifetime insurance. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during July. More details in the description below. Thank you so much to everyone that goes the extra mile in supporting the channel with the join button under our videos or becoming a Patreon or donating or even just subscribing and liking and commenting on our videos and sharing them. You'll get an occasional exclusive video. There's polls and posts to get involved with. Please consider joining them because it really, really helps us out. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got any feedback, please chuck it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you.